What's going on guys, Victor here. I'm with my good buddy, Tyler DeGraff of Always and Forever Charters out of Englewood, Florida. I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked below. And today we got special guests, Colin. Hello. And Jordan. Hi. And their dad, Troy. So we are going after one of my favorite species today that is African Pompano. We got lovely Babe behind the camera. We got Brookie, RJ, Tyler. Our first mate, our bait catcher. We're loading up on baits right now. Check this out. Starting to become full of pilchards, threadfin herrings, cigar minnows. We got a 50 mile journey ahead of us, don't we? Yeah, we do. A couple hours out. So we'll see you guys out there. At the spot. And we just have a basic bottom rig. And then this is called a threadfin herring. There it is. It's on, Brooke. It's on. There we go. Come on, AP. That was a good hit. Hard fighting bottom fish, whatever it is. So, ooh, look at that. Yeah. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. So these African pompano, like Tyler was telling us, they're out here right now spawning. So they're not out here all the time. They're gonna move to a lot deeper water in the summertime, but right now is like the best time to target them. March. I think he said late February all the way to early April. It's the twin. Yes, it is. It's spunky. Normally, you guys see us, we love eating these fish. A lot of people don't like amberjacks. We do. But right now in the Gulf of Mexico, the season is closed. So Tyler told us that we're probably gonna have to weave through some jacks to get to the African Pompano. This is what he means. Beautiful amberjack and one of the many things you guys can catch out here if you uh, book a trip with Tyler. Amberjacks, kudas, African Pompano, snapper grouper. So we're gonna send this guy home to live another day. So those live baits we caught earlier, just like this. I like to hook them from the bottom to the top. You have less of a chance of that hook doubling back into the bait. So Tyler says we're fishing a spring-like area and we're anchored up. So fish don't always sit on one area of the wreck the entire day. And especially something like an African pompano is a schooling fish. They're gonna be swimming around in circles. And he says that it might take 10 minutes, 30 minutes for the school to swim by, right? It depends. Whenever they swim under the boat, that's when we're gonna hook them. Colin got the lucky touch. It's too early to be worn out already. No. Paul, this is your second fish of many today. Jordan, what's going on over pounds. there? RJ? They don't How like much? they don't like your hook? That's no. 50. <laughs> You're almost there. You're almost Why am there. I sweating so much? <laughs> <laughs> you got a big fish. You're doing a great yeah. job. Look at that thing. Nice fish. Look at that. Good job. You ready to let him go? Woo, perfect. Good job, Colin. Good job, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh yeah, Jordan, that's a good one. When he's running, just let him run, okay? Holy smokes. That's different, that's a different fish. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, come around here, Jordan. 30 pound might be the key. I think the kids are stealing the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking good. Yeah. It's looking big and blue. Silver. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Somebody's already got the gap in his hand. He's feeling confident. I'm feeling confident now. It's not over yet. Oh, just nice and easy. Let him. There you go. Almost done. You're almost done. Almost there. You see that? And then he takes off again. Yeah, it's because he's got to make it hard for you. Yeah. He's got to give his last chance to live. All right. Wow, Jordan, you did it. Bring him over here. Right, Look at that one. That's Good a monster. Job. Heck yeah, go stand by your fish. That's incredible. Come on, come on, come on. 
<laughs> all right, Jordan, it's, this one's going to be really heavy, okay? I want you to give it all your strength. Now get your other hand under his belly, just like that. You hear him grunting? Wow. You can't hold that fish out. Heck yeah, good job. It's heavy. Heck yeah, it's heavy. Jordan, get in here. No. Come here. This girl got this giant African pompano all by herself. I'm very proud of you. Thanks. That was an incredible catch. That's, that's not an easy fish to catch, especially in this deep of water. And she did an amazing, amazing job. Look at that, that's a Grizzly 400 right there. And it can't even fit in it straight. Right across the whole cooler. Yep, there it is. Woo! Please be the right one, be the right one. Be an African pop. Huh? It's very hard to sell. Hold up for one second. AJ number two. I just gotta take lessons from the kids. Not the AP we wanted, but you can't complain about catching a fish. I mean, they put up one hell of a fight, and I'm happy to see Jordan catch her African pompano. So we're gonna let this guy go again. They're all like the exact same size too. We gave it all we got at this spot, and Tyler says that sometimes. The African pompano are at a different area of the spring, so we're gonna pull up anger, move like 300 feet that way. Because we're having fun, we're catching a ton of fish, but we are primarily targeting African pompano where there's just too many amberjacks here. That way, the African pompano are just not seeing our baits. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, I'm on. On a Yes, baby. Guess where he's going, Tyler, the anchor. Yep. Here we go. We got Jordan hooked up, Colin hooked up, Vic hooked up, midship. <laughs> Where's the gap, RJ? It's a pop. It is. Yep. Yes. It's not a it's not a Jordan sized fish, but it'll do. That's what we came for. Oh yeah. Nice. We're gonna release this one in hopes of a bigger one, but look at that. Beautiful Want me to get a quick African pompano. No, I can just take a picture of okay. Ready? See ya! There we go. Good. It's satisfying to release those things, Better isn't it? Swim up strong too. Yeah. No, I like seeing him swim. I don't want to see him float. Well, we got Colin on with what we think is going to be a bigger one. We released mine. You can only keep two African pompano per vessel. So you can keep one per person, Tyler? One per person or two per vessel. Two per vessel. So even yep. though there's a bunch of us. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah. It's about the same. Is he? Yeah. He's a little bigger. Nice job! <laughs> See if your sister can do it, you can do it, and hers was even bigger than this. Yeah. <laughs> nice job! <sighs> it's so slippery. I'm happy you guys got them. I got one now. Colin's got one. Nice. Jordan's got one. Now Yay, Murphy's next. I have a bloody shirt. <laughs> now that this fish is in the sun, you guys can really appreciate how beautiful it is. I mean. Look at all that iridescence. You got the greens, the blues, a little bit of yellow on them. They're like no other fish. And when I say top eating fish, this is like my top three. I love these things. So big thank you to Tyler once again. Actually just smoked the African pompano. That was a good bite right there. It was, it was just boom, boom, boom. Every single person on the boat at least hooked one or caught one, which was awesome. Now we're gonna film two videos on this trip. We're about to go and get on some red grouper. Right? Yep. Mangrove snapper, lane snapper. Um, I mean, you never know what you're going to catch out here. So if you guys are looking to fill up the cooler, definitely check out Tyler. I'm going to have all of his stuff linked below. Catch you guys at the flay table and we'll flay these African pompano up. Now, African pompano 
One of the reasons they're so hard to flay is you guys are gonna see they have a massive rib cage right here. Get on the fish's spine and very superficially, I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna go along the outside edge of this fish. You guys see, you don't have to rush, just take your time, especially with a fish like this. It's not that easy to fillet. I like to make a tail cut right here, working this way back up from the tail to the head. So I take my knife and I rest it on the fish's spine. I really make sure that my knife is in contact with the fish's bone, not just aimlessly gr gliding through flesh, but I can really feel that the knife is on the fish's spine. And you might have to make multiple passes because it is such a big fish until I get to the fish's backbone. Every fish's backbone always runs along the center right here. So the first step is always getting to the fish's backbone. So now basically if you guys can picture it, we've separated the fish on the top half and the bottom half and the only place it's attached now is going to be on the backbone and the ribs right here. Okay, so this head meat is just going to fold away because we already made those cuts. And you can see it's going to be attached right here by the rib cage. Now what I'm going to do is very gently take this flap right here and we're going to have to go over the backbone and over the rib cage. You're going to take your knife, get on this rib cage and then go down along it. And that's it. Now to skin our African pompano. This is actually a nine inch flexible filet that actually now come with edge guards. I'm gonna have them linked below as well. When I skin fish, I always break it down into manageable pieces. I would do something like this where I would cut down the middle and separate it into two loins. Since African pompano have very thin skin, remember any fish that has really thin skin, the trick to skinning them is to break it down into smaller sections because the longer you have to go for skinning, the greater the likelihood you're gonna pierce through that thin skin. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna take it into thirds, okay? Just like this. Now, instead of skinning one big piece, I have three smaller pieces to skin. I'm gonna take my knife. Always, when you're skinning, start on the tail end of the fish and work up towards the head. Now, something like this that I know is gonna have a lot of bloodline and be very bloody, I'm going to leave a very thin, 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 thin layer of flesh. And this will also not only prevent me from not getting any skin in my final products, but you guys see this white stringy stuff and that bloodline? Now that's not in your final product, which I would have cut out anyway. All right, guys, so before we move on, if you could do me a big favor, if you guys like this video so far, please like the video. It really helps out Brooke and I with the channels grow. YouTube pushes our videos out when people actually like the video, so hit the thumbs up button real quick. And I actually forgot to mention at the fillet table, all the knives you guys always see Brooke and I use, those are Dexter knives. Um, you can actually save 20% off use code Landshark. I'm gonna have it linked below, as well as on the screen here, and that's at DexterOutdoors.com. So, I know I say my favorite fish all the time and I sound like a broken record, but this is one of my favorite fish. The reason why, number one, it is super firm yet very tender, which is pretty rare to find in fish. There are very few fish that are so versatile like African pompano. The meat just glistens. We don't catch a lot of them. They're beautiful fish. So I love, love working with them. So we're gonna do two things tonight really honor the fish. Going out there and catching it is one thing, but respecting it in the kitchen, that's another thing. We're gonna do a little ceviche. This is a fresh Florida orange, just chopped up a little cucumber, some grape tomatoes. I like to use the shoulder piece of the African pompano for ceviche. That is the best piece. If you can take a chef's knife and just slice it off like that without it falling apart, you could never do that with something like yellowtail. That's why I like working with this fish so much. It's just so firm and good. So we like pieces about this for our ceviche, but you know, you can, it's your ceviche, so you can make it how you want it. So I like to go about like this, you know, cut it accordingly. Just gorgeous pieces of fish, absolutely gorgeous. This is pure lime juice. When you make ceviche, 
your fish is cooking without heat. Instead of tossing all our ingredients with the lime juice first, you put your fish in the lime juice on its own. That way you don't have to use as much lime juice to raise the level so it all soaks in because you need to completely submerse your fish in the lime juice. Put this in our lime juice. You can use as much as you want. That thing can be drowning in there. The whole point is though you need enough. So I got them portioned into like four to six ounce portions per person. And we're not gonna go crazy with the seasonings because this fish really speaks for itself. So just a generous amount of salt. And one thing to note, when you are pan searing fish, these fish have been dried, not once, but twice with paper towels. Anytime I put them in the fridge, they develop that condensation, then I always dry them. You want a really nice dry surface of your fish to get that crust going. Black pepper, some coriander, and then it wouldn't be a Vic Catch and Cook without garlic powder. If I was on a deserted island and I had one condiment, it'd be garlic powder. I don't think garlic powder is a condiment. Okay, you're right. In all fairness, if I had one spice to choose from, it would be garlic powder. And do the same thing on the other side. So, the other day, I mentioned in the video that a company by the name of Branch and Vine, which is a family-owned company, sent us a bunch of infused olive oils and vinegars. We loved it. They also sent us this stuff. Um, unfiltered honey. This is orange blossom honey. I like a little sweetness to my ceviche. So before we mix it with the vegetables, I'm gonna take a little bit of honey and drizzle it into our lime juice. And I'm gonna have them linked below. Not sponsored by them, but so far we love their stuff. And you gotta salt your ceviche too. So we're gonna do a generous amount of salt. You guys can see since I put it in there, that whiteness, that's what you get. That's the natural process of the citric acid cooking without heat, the fish. And you guys can see this is such a perfect fish to use for ceviche. Deliciously firm yet tender. Ideal, ideal textbook fish for ceviche, delicious. I actually added some red onion and cilantro as well to our fish. Two nonstick pans, really high heat. Some avocado oil. Okay, so you want that oil real hot because what we want to do is we want to create a nice crust on this. So we're going to pan sear it. So in, going down. You want to cook this fish three quarters of the way on one side, and that's what you end up with. A beautiful golden brown sear that's gonna lock in all that flavor. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! So this is our cauliflower puree. I guess I never talked about it. Basically, it is cauliflower, garlic, thyme, a little bit of butter, some milk, salt, and pepper. Going down with the broccolini. And then look at this beautiful piece of African pompano. I mean, look at that, come on. Doesn't that just make you smile? And then this is some toasted pine nuts that I think are gonna pair very well. And that's it. Well, if it was appropriate to lick my plate, I probably would lick my plate. It was absolutely delicious. The African pompano was cooked to perfection. And it, we haven't had African pompano in years. I think we've caught one on the channel since like and did a catch and cook for you guys. So we, it's definitely a treat. We do not get it very often. And the entire plate was delicious. So good job, Nick. Thank you. Look at everybody's plate. It looks like that. It was, everything on there was superb. Good job. Uh, Victor's done it again. He's just an artist in the kitchen, and it was packed with flavor. 
It's just incredible. Another amazing meal. Well, I've never had mashed cauliflower. I've been kind of afraid of it, but it's very good and I would definitely, I want to have it again. Um, the pine nuts were a really great touch, crunchy and good. Crunchy on the fish. The sear really made me delicious. At first glance, this was a seemingly simple dish. It didn't look very like exotic, but everything had so much flavor. It was it was super good, and uh, the African pompano was very juicy and held a lot of flavor. It was definitely a fantastic meal. Funny thing is it actually did not have a lot of ingredients, and that's what I want to show you guys is you can make these really good, flavorful meals for your family or your friends. Broccoli, cauliflower, garlic, thyme, all things you have in the household besides the cauliflower. And the African pompano, just the simplicity of that high heat sear, that fish just speaks volumes, I'm telling you. It is top three of my favorite fish, and I love cooking it, and I love cooking it for these people. So we're gonna go ahead and enjoy some ceviche. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. Please like the video if you haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next one.